Hey guys, Jesse here, and welcome to another language breakdown where I take a video, a song, so any kind of a English well, video, <laughs> and I break down the language in it to help you with pronunciation, uh, vocabulary, useful expressions and fluency builders, and really the whole package in a natural context to help you with your fluency. Today I have a good one. I have a good song that I know you know. I know you've heard it, even if you don't know the title. It's called Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. Of course, I'll put the link to the original video in the description box. And we're going to mostly be working with a few expressions, but heavy on pronunciation and just how we use different vocabulary words in different situations. And a little story about this, um, this song. This song was the subject of probably the worst class that I'd ever given in my life. And it was during my certification, my teaching certification course. And I did a song lesson and I wanted to do the song because it's a good song. But the whole class, it was jumbled, scattered, the way I was delivering it, 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 it was the worst uh, class I'd ever given in my life before that or since. And it was graded. I was stressed. You know, there's pressure in that situation. Anyway, it was bad. So today is hopefully my opportunity to make up for that and kind of put a good association with this song in my mind because I always have that bad taste in my mouth right? That expression, to have a bad taste in your mouth about something. Uh, something has a bad experience or a bad connection with you mentally. This is a good song. I love the song. I hate that connection that I have with it. So today, we're going to try to change that. So let's get into the song, Otis Redding's Sitting on the Duck of the Bay. Let me move over here so you can see the, uh, the video. As I said, I'll put the link in the description box below. So if you get annoyed about me stopping and going and repeating and stopping, if you just want to listen to the song, go there and listen to the song. But let's get started. Let's take it kind of a verse by verse or chunk by chunk. Let's check it out. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And then I'll watch them roll away again Yeah So going back here, let's work with pronunciation first. Sitting, we have sitting, morning, evening, these are, you've probably heard these, especially if you're intermediate and advanced. You've heard these, right? Sitting, morning, evening. Uh, the thing about these are they are common in casual conversation, right? In America, especially, probably in England, they do this too. Any sort of colloquial, you know, converse, casual conversation. If you're giving a presentation about this where we just cut off the G, right? If you're in a professional environment or giving a presentation or you're in any sort of formal environment, I recommend don't cut off the G. Say the, the proper word in the proper way. So first step, if you are just kind of learning, Learn the words in the proper way first. Don't go straight into trying to sound native and have reduce your accent, accent reduction, which I hate. Um, instead, learn the words properly. Learn the actual word. And then as you get more comfortable with it, then you can start changing it and modifying it and sound more natural after you are used to and familiar with saying the official word, right? Because if we say sitting 
in the morning. It could sound natural, but if you're also a language learner, it may make you sound like you know less English. And it may make you sound actually less natural and less fluent if you're if you have your heavy accent or if you make other grammar mistakes and then you say morning or sitting, it just, it doesn't fit right. So learn the official one. And plus, if you are speaking by the textbook, but then you throw in the word morning or sitting, they, there's a break in the flow, right? So learn the official one. And then once you get comfortable with the proper pronunciation, then start to experiment with different ways to say it with making your language more fluent and customize it. I'll be sit sitting in the morning sun. I'll be sitting when the evening comes. And he cuts off the S and come too. That's a certain dialect. Then the next one, he says, watching, and he says the ING. If you notice, you'll listen. He says watching because we don't always cut off that G either. Watching the ships roll in and watch them roll away again. Roll in, roll in, roll away. Roll in or roll out. And that just means come in, right? When, you, when I hear the idea of roll in and roll away, kind of gets a relaxed, laid back feel. Kind of like at the beach, the water, the tides, we have the tides roll in and the tides roll out. That's the idea. It's not literally roll like a wheel. The tides roll in and the tides roll out. You can't explain that. <laughs> uh, and the same thing, the ships, they calmly roll in and calmly roll out. It's like a way to say come and go, but you're painting a picture of more relaxed, more laid back. Here we go. Watching the ships roll in, and then I watch them roll away again. Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay. Watching the tide roll away. The tide is the waves that come up at the beach. If you're at the ocean on the beach, when the water comes in and it gets higher, that's the tide. The tide. The tide comes in or the tide rolls in. Watching the tide. Sitting on a dock of the bay, wasting time. Sorry to stop this so much. Wasting time. Again, chop off the G. Uh, it kind of gives you the relaxed feel, bored, maybe uneducated. It doesn't sound good when you always cut off the G, unless you're singing a cool song. But Wasting time, wasting time. Follow me. Wasting time, wasting time. Don't waste your time. But when you waste time, if you're a Spanish speaker, you may want to translate this to lose time, right? Perder tiempo. Uh, but we don't say lose time. Lose time means something a little different. You know, we're losing time. But waste time is when you spend your time doing nothing, right? You're playing uh, Candy Crush on your phone. <laughs> You're wasting time. You're just, spend time is to use your time usefully. To waste time is to not use your time usefully, right? To waste time. You're losing. You're missing. You're, you're not spending your time on useful things. To waste time. Sitting on a dock of the bay, wasting time. I left my home in Georgia, 
headed for the Frisco Bay Cause I've had nothing to live for And look like nothing's gonna come my way So I left my home in Georgia headed for Headed for, when you're headed for somewhere, a phrasal verb, but you don't have to really think about it as a phrasal verb, but a vocabulary word. Headed for, when you're headed for somewhere, you're going in a direction, right? You're going in a, in a certain direction. I'm headed for the, the beach. <laughs> I'm headed for success, right? Headed for, you're in a direction with, a, um, with an objective right, with a finish line. In this case, he's headed for the Frisco Bay. Frisco is San Francisco, San Francisco, and Bay is the land of water, the mass of water, right? Kind of like a beach, but a smaller beach. Um, headed for the Frisco Bay, and nothing's going to come my way means, no, I'm not going to have any fortune. I'm not going to have any luck. I'm not going to have any open opportunities, right? Nothing's going to come my way. No good luck is going to come to me. It looks like, right? He has that little, it looks like, looks like nothing's going to come my way. Georgia, headed for the Frisco Bay. I've had nothing to live for. Look like nothing's gonna come my way So I'm just gonna sit on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away mm. I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Look like nothing's gonna change Same. Stop. Uh, look like, look like nothing's gonna change. Look like, you know, he kind of sings a song the way we would say it casually. It looks like, right? That's the proper way, right? It looks like nothing's gonna change. It looks like gonna, we say gonna normally. You can say that in presentations or going to. But by the way, gonna. If you're going to say gonna, if you're going to say gonna, you have to follow it with a verb. So I would never say, I'm going to store, uh, I'm going to, I've heard this before, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to the store. Do you want anything? That just sounds weird. We don't say I'm going to the store. I'm going to the store. No, if you use gonna, it has to be with a verb. I'm going to go to the store. If you're gonna say gonna, you get me? But looks like, it looks like, look like nothing's gonna change. You follow me and then follow the song. Look like nothing's gonna change. Look like nothing's gonna change. Now sing it with the song and let's move on. Look like nothing's gonna change. the same I can't do what 10 people tell me to do so I guess I'll remain the same yes. okay we're gonna get to a good part next but I wanted to highlight so I guess so I guess I'll so I guess I'll you follow me so I guess I'll so I so I so I guess so I guess so I guess I'll, it's like, I suppose I'll, well, it looks like, I guess I'll, I imagine I'll, right? When you suppose something you're going to do, right? It's kind of nothing too forceful. Don't use this in an urgent situation. Like you're, if you're making a business deal, if you're selling something, don't say this. But if you want to transmit that it's no big deal, I guess I'll just stay home. So I guess I'll remain the same. Let's listen to this and go to the next uh, where we talk about resting my bones. So I guess I'll remain the same. Yes. 
let's go back again. Everything still remains the same. I can't do what ten people tell me to do. So I guess I'll remain the same. Yes, sitting here resting my bones. And this loneliness won't leave me alone. Listen. Two thousand miles I roam just to make this dock my home. There we go. Sitting here resting my bones. Resting my bones. He kind of said that because it rhymed, obviously. But when you're resting your bones, your you know, your bones you don't really learn this to say it and to use it unless it's your personality. Uh, but it's important to know for this situation, right? It's ways to play with the language. That's what I love about this. And this loneliness won't leave me alone. Loneliness, this loneliness, if you're lonely, loneliness is a noun. To be lonely is an adjective. This loneliness, loneliness is associated with sad or negative, right? If you're alone and you're like, you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend and you're alone and happy about it, uh, or, you know, maybe not happy about it, maybe you are, but you're fine and that's the way you want it. You're not really lonely. So don't use the word lonely. You're alone. You're, you're a happily single or whatever, but loneliness, if you're lonely, it has the connection of sadness, right? Negativity. Oh, I'm lonely. Right? Sometimes we can be lonely in a crowd of people. That's a common expression, right? We're lonely in the middle of New York, right? You feel alone. You feel lonely, sad. That's the difference. And these 2,000 miles I roamed, roamed here is traveled. Roaming, traveling, wandering, right? Typically roaming, traveling has a destination typically, Roaming, not necessarily. It's just wandering. Okay, here we go. Sing along with them. I'm born the same. Yes. Sitting here resting my bones. And this loneliness won't leave me alone. This 2,000 miles I roam. Just to make this dark my Home. Now I'm just gonna sit at the dock of a bay Watching the tide roll away Ooh, I'm sitting on the dock of a bay Wasting time Wait a minute, Jesse. Why does he say sitting at the dock of the bay up here and sitting on the dock of the bay here? Why, which one is correct? It depends, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people study English like within this this funnel, right? This this tunnel vision, essentially. You know, we have one correct way to say it, one correct preposition with a verb, and that's the way it is. Not necessarily, right? Um, so, sitting at the dock of the bay, sitting on the dock of the bay. It kind of depends on your position, right? Let's meet at the bank. Let's meet in the bank. Let's meet on the bank? No, not typically. But let's meet at the mall. Let's meet in the mall. Let's meet in the mall in front of Sabaros. You know, let's meet. It depends on your position. At is typically at a location, right? In, a, in your maps on your phone, at a certain location, in is maybe inside a store, on the dock of the bay because there's the dock. The dock is the wooden street, <laughs> the wooden uh, walkway that goes out into the water sitting on the dock of the bay. It depends on your location, position, and what you want to communicate. Communication is always first. Communication has the priority when learning English. You can learn grammar, you can learn verb tenses, irregular verbs, 
uh, exams, all of this bullshit. And, and I mean, I say bullshit, it's, uh, it's useful, but at the end of the day, good expression, at the end of the day, it's about communication, right? So what are you trying to communicate? What are you trying to put a picture in the other person's mind? That's the goal with language. So do you mean you want to sit at the dock of the bay, on the dock of the bay, at the bank, in the bank, in front of the bank, right? It's all about communication, baby. Let's go. Now I'm just gonna sit at the dock of a bay Watching the tide roll away Ooh, I'm sitting on the dock of a bay Wasting time This is called whistling. That's why it says that here. It's called whistling. Whistle. Whistle. Like like the seven dwarfs in Snow White. Whistle while you work. Anyway, so that was sitting on the dock of the bay. If you want, I have a worksheet at Sweet Academy. I have a worksheet and I'll put the link down here below. If you want to just do a little extra work going over some specific expressions, uh, grammar, comprehension questions. I give some questions about the meaning of the song and just to make sure you understood the concepts. And I'll put that in the description box below. Uh, other than that, I've spent enough of your time, hopefully not wasted your time, hopefully spent your time wisely. Anyway, thank you for the, joining me in this language breakdown. Keep teaching and keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.